click it. What am I clicking? Oh, you can't see it. Okay, <laughs> never mind. I'm so short, I can't reach over there. That's funny. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, when people have a question, they often ask, Alexa, I can't say it too loud or she'll start talking or Google it. But when I have a question in the culinary world, especially when it comes to how to use an appliance, there is only one person that has all the answers in the universe. It doesn't matter how difficult the handbook seems or the machine seems, there is one person that can figure everything out. Her name is Kathy Hester, and she is here today to show us that we actually can easily, supposedly, use the Breville Peel and Dice. I bought this a couple of years ago. It was we, we don't do people think they just give us stuff. No, I paid like almost six hundred dollars for it because I saw Dylan Holmes make like salsa with it, and I'm like, wow, this is like so much easier than cutting tomatoes. But I'm intimidated by it. I couldn't put it together. So it's still a great food processor. I still recommend the Breville because it's so big. I think it's sixteen cups. But the only thing I know how to do is just use it with the Flayed, and there's all these all these things here which I don't know what to do with and she's going to show us please welcome her to the show how come you're so smart when it comes to figuring stuff out I don't know it's probably some neurosis deep inside my brain <laughs> <laughs> well I think it's a gift because I mean I could use you here like at full time because I can't figure anything out and you know well I'm here for you and for everybody else too and so it's my my people who are some of your people too, talk me into getting the, the Breville peel and dice. So a couple of things I just want to say to everybody, just so we're all on the same page. There is the Breville sous chef, and this is like the sous chef peel and dice. They're, they look like they're the same thing only without the peel and dice kit, but they are not. I had the Breville sous chef and you would have to get another like $200 thing to add the one blade kit that comes with this okay and then let's show this is the <laughs> cheryl's behind helping show the box <laughs> and so <laughs> what you can see here is there's different stuff i'm going to show you all of these here we go and it looks like it comes with three blades to dice it does not i did get the extra dicing kit after i tried it out and we're going to talk about that a little bit and so you, I think you can take this away. Hey, um. <laughs> you know what? I think it might actually be easier. It might be easier if you could just come over. I mean, seriously, I'll get you a plane ticket because Susanna says, I need to know how to use this. She got hers in January. So maybe we can kind of do it for dummies because um, I, I believe I have the peel and dice because I've got this blade, right? You do. You All do. Right. Absolutely. And so like, here's the thing. So you guys can see right here. This would be the clue that you have the peel and dice. So if you don't, you don't have two double decker of this. You just have th all this stuff comes with the regular sous chef. All of this stuff underneath comes with the peel and dice. And when you get it, it's the 12 millimeter dicing kit. And so Cheryl was kvetching a little bit about the onions being too big. And so then separately, and we'll use a little bit of all of them. I haven't used these two blades. This is the add-on. This was like $130. And I gave uh, Chef AJ all the links. So, and I'm going to show you where you can see some of it on Amazon too. That might help. So this gives you an eight millimeter and a 16, I think. Wait, why, is that pink? why is that pink and green? So you can figure out which is which, because actually it's kind of cool. Wait, but that's um, not with the peel and dice. The small one came with the sous chef? No. Okay. This box comes with the peel and dice. All of this stuff comes together. This I bought extra. And what is that? Because I don't think I have that, right? You don't. And it's just, it. you use it exactly the same way, hopefully, because we're I'm going to be doing it here. As we do the one, it's just one is a smaller dice and one is a larger dice. You know, you'd be a great teacher. Like you're so patient. I really love that about you because I, I get so easily frustrated. So let's, let's wind it back even further. And do, absolutely. Let's do Breville for dummies. Okay. All because right. Seriously. Because if I have the question and I'm a chef, other people have the question. So 
anybody getting the Breville sous chef or the peel and dice will have this same, what do you call this? The bowl, the work bowl, the canister, yeah, right? Yeah, I think it's, and not only that, I kind of kept everything together. One of the things I like about the Breville and it stores inside. So you have a mini chopper too. So you can use a you, mini You mean chopper. I got I got more pieces than this? You got more pieces. Now oh, where you put it? Me. Yeah. I don't have the psychic ability yet. Yeah, yeah. I'm working oh my on gosh. It. I think I figured but, I should, I didn't know what it was. So I think I just who knows what I did with it. Okay. It's, but would you would you say that house. most people in general have this? They kind of yes. use it because if they've ever had any kind of food processor, just using an S blade they probably do know how to do that. Yeah, so let me show you this a little bit so that when when Chef AJ's talking, see how the, you're like, look, those are little S's. And unless you look at them from overhead, you're like, why do they call them S blades? Or if you're like me. So, and what's really cool, and I don't, let's see if I can get in there a little bit more. Okay, this, this uh, food processor is ridiculously expensive, however, they hand you everything. So look, that one says dough blade. So notice it doesn't yeah. have any metal. Okay. Right? So this is my dough blade and this is used with a large canister. Oh no, that's not your dough blade. The dough blade is plastic. Wait, all this, the is way. Pla this looks plastic. Oh, it's, oh, I'm sorry. The light hit it and it looked yeah. like silver well, to me. But when you use the dough blade, do you use the large canister? Yes. And actually, let's see if I can. So it and fits on this. So, so it, it fits on the regular thing. So Kathy, yeah. when you can use the dough blade, for example, because I don't really make bread. So would I ever use the dough blade? Chances are not. I wonder if you might be able to use it for like some bottoms of your cheesecakes. But if you're using dates and... Oh, it doesn't, stuff, it doesn't feel very sharp, but you're right. It does fit in the main unit. It's so not sharp at all. So it's for kneading. So it is mostly for for um, breads and things like that. Now, it you'll notice you does say what it is. If I would just take the time to put my glasses on, then we got okay. this little guy. This little guy is when you use the smaller plastic bowl. Is that yeah. correct? Right. There's the mini chopping blade and the S. Pro. So the one that just says S, and I'll show you from over. I think this will work. Good. So see how that fits on this one. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Now so, let's try putting the, the bowl in. What okay. is the benefit of using a mini blade? I mean, you can do a little job in a big thing. So why go to the trouble of putting the small? Not blade? always. It depends oh. on how small. Like, have you ever tried to do just a little bit in your Vitamix, right? And you know how thin it gets where it won't really get a hold of it. So I would use this if I just, uh, I also have an immersion blender that has a chopper on it. I can interchange this. So it, it is kind of a bonus. And one thing that this does that one of my old food processors doesn't is if I put stuff in here and chop it up, it doesn't get into the larger bowl. I only have to clean the interior bowl and that makes it superior. Okay. okay? All right. So well, I'm, I'm so going to go look for that bowl, but Kathy, even without the peel and dice, there's a bunch of blades in here. Oh, Maybe we're going to talk like, about this. Like what, what is this one? And, okay. how, and what do I put so, it in? So when we're looking at, and let me move this so you guys and can then, see. I don't know if you can even see me, but I'm guessing that she oh, yeah, these blades. Absolutely. I'm guessing you kind of probably have to put this in. And this is called the disc spindle, which yeah. makes no sense to anyone. And so what it does is if we're here, see how this goes on where we're putting other things and it creates this, this space. Now, when I make cruciferous crunch, so if you go on YouTube and look for my cruciferous crunch video, I shred all the veggies, right? And it's right. beautiful. And everyone's like, I've never used that before. Now, this plastic one we probably aren't going to use it it's for whipping. We might be able to do it with aquafaba. I'm not sure I have that. Is that this? No, there's one that's to the, so like looking into your case this way, Chef AJ. Is it this one? Yes, that's the whipping disc. But so the first one you had was this. Let's see yeah, which one. Because Kathy, you there's some numbers right here. Like it says zero, yes. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I don't know what that means. All right. And I'm trying, come on. Come on, show me the place. Okay. So this is 
where she's talking. So what I want you to do, so look, this says position closed, which I have it on now. And I want you to notice right there, okay? As I crank it up. Oh, you're gonna get yeah. a bigger and bigger blade. So if it's closed, you wouldn't That's cut. That's as big. Oh. Right, you won't cut yourself, but that means when you're making um, my oat scallop potatoes that are whole food plant-based no oil, instead of using a mandolin and eating a small part of your finger, like perhaps I've done, you just put it through here and it's very safe. So you can slice but, those potatoes. But Kathy, look, this doesn't seem like a very big hole to be putting things in other than like a carrot. Okay. You have three, <laughs> you have three holes in there. We right? do? One, two. I, I mean, oh, maybe, no, two. I'm lying. I can't but believe they even call me chef. Like, I cannot believe. Oh, please. That. This is so mind blowing that you know how to okay. do it. Okay. In the sous chef, not the peel and dice. You don't have this in between when you have this, which is kind of cool. And okay, Breville costs a bazillion dollars. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on I, that. I always wondered what this was, like a little test. Well, hey, look, it opens. Yeah. And you can use it for a measurement should you Ooh. want to. Look at that. There's ounces and milliliters on there. It's crazy. I did not know. And so, and then you put this back on. It doesn't have any holes through it. That's just little grippies to help push things down. Okay. So let's say, I don't even know if this carrot, this carrot will mostly fit through this one, right? So see that now, oh yeah, there is three. I, I don't know why. Okay. So then look, I know I'm, I've lost you, Chef AJ, because you're looking down. Okay. This comes out too. You pull it from either side. And then you have a bigger hole. See that? Okay, you're right. That is a bigger hole. So I'm thinking. Oh wow! I don't so know, this this potato would fit for sure. Not yeah, all potatoes. So here's my bigger hole that I didn't even know about. And then if I get you correctly, you can use this as the pusher downer thing. Yes, you would use that as the pusher downer. And watch this. So as this comes out, that is your biggest hole. Whoa. So like, that's russet. Let's, I think I have a fatter one. That's cool. That's pretty, that's pretty big, right? So now the caveat is this little thing here at the bottom of the big pusher has to engage some in here before it will go ahead and go. But yes, you absolutely can slice potatoes thinly for stuff like that. So, so that's kind of the, how this fits together. Okay. And, Cause there's some and, pieces in here that I guess I haven't even opened and I don't know what they are. Okay. This is your spatula so that you can go, Ooh, look, I have a spatula that matches my Breville. Oh my right. God. I didn't even know. And oh. it's, it's not a bad spatula. I am an owner of probably 50 spatulas. I feel very, if you guys are out there and you don't have even more, and I'm not talking flip a, flip a thing in the pan or saute, I'm talking about a proper clean things out spatula. You need a few sizes of these. And then the other thing is actually in my ball of jar, of, of my jar of brushes. So it looks like this, right? Okay, so yeah, I, I have that. and. Where is it now? Oh, uh, that is the Breville. Okay. So this, is the, this, is, this is a brush. Yeah. Open it up. It's for cleaning. So this works really well. And in fact, it gets the bottom of my soy milk maker cleaned really well. Ooh, and then you have this. So that's a scraper. And we'll talk about this when we get to the dicing blade. But there are a couple of things that it's good to just go ahead and get some things out of the way with. And you use this like just to clean the food processor in general or the blades specifically? I think you could do either. But what you don't want to do, the blades are very, very sharp. And we're going to talk about with the peeling kit and stuff like that, how best to do a few things. So it's it's not a bad idea to have a little, oh, I'm trying to spatula it, to have a little room between you and the sharp blades. So I want to still show you these. Okay, so we saw the slicing blade. 
you saw how you can make it different things and that way you're whatever you're slicing at least thickness wise is going to be consistent and th that's kind of magical because you can spend a couple hundred dollars on a good mandolin and I even had one of those gloves where you couldn't cut yourself that finally ate a hole into that glove so I like this for that so there's there are three other blades. So yeah. I'm going to get them one at a time with you because I think I know what actually it looks like I got four, yeah three other blades. So this one has like little looks like little teeth. And it's the it's the big one. It's the one with the big teeth. And let me show everybody there. And looky here. So this is one of the reasons this costs so much. It actually says it's for french fries. No way. This is yeah, a french fry cutter. Yeah, I haven't used this one yet, I have to say. And then in the box itself, too. Here, let me. In this box, it says, it tells you what it is, but it also tells you on the blade. So then there's a, just a Julianne. You know, so if I, I just never thought to turn a blade over, but you're right. It does say it. Yeah. And so I just want to say, because... Sometimes it makes me feel funny to spend this much money on a, a product, but they've also put a lot of time and effort. These are very solid. And so that's the Julianne blade. Oh my God. And you this know is Sorry, the but blade the I use all the time. Okay. So this is cool. Is this what you use for Crew Crew? Crew Crew? Cruciferous Crunch? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was like, what's that? Um, and here, I want to show you guys something because I show pe this people this when they're in Kathy's cooking club, we use this and everybody's like, oh, I never knew how to use the shredder before. So maybe we'll shred something really quick. So look, do you see if you turn this sideways, you see one side is open at the top, right? So see how it's the big holes when I hold mm -hmm. it this way that you can see through and down here, it will be the little holes. So whatever is raised will go to the top. So let's let's go ahead and let's set this up for a second because most people do not use this and it's the best thing ever. Um, so we've got this, so I've got that little pole. This also, you don't have to have this food processor. If you have, a, if you have this blade, it, it's gonna work that it has an additional thing you put in there, you put it, the open side up so like right now oh do they say oh on this one it says coarse shredder or fine shredder right on the blade engraved in nice. so you can, kathy what is this called this piece it is called the disc spindle just and how do i know that because i read it yeah. i did not know that off the top so let's do this really quick so we're going to put this on and let's just okay so I'm going to use just here. I'll, sh I'll show you here for just a second. I'm going to use, just take this part out because this carrot is small enough to fit through. I have this gigantic carrot that we're going to dice in a minute. That is not going to fit through here. I, I would have to take another level out. Okay. Now let me show you a couple of things on actually this. Let's see how, I mean, <laughs> okay. So on here, there's the power on and off button, start and pause. That means you could pause something as it's going, you can pulse. And as we're gonna do with the peeling, you can have it set to go for 25 seconds. So I always I'm wondered if there was a timer on that. I could never figure that out. Yeah, it is for the peeling and the pe and I actually got some tendonitis in my thumb a few weeks ago from my dehydrator class from chopping too many things, which is why I bought this. It was also on sale. It's not on sale right now, but before we go, somebody remind Chef AJ to remind me and I'll show you how you can find out if it's in the Amazon warehouse and if you can get a return. This time of the year is cherry for returns from now to like the beginning of January. So my original Breville sous chef without the peel and dice, I got half price from there. That's why I was, when Chef AJ said, get the other one. I was like, no, I just paid 
<laughs> a lot. So I'm going to put the power on. I'm going to put my carrot in here. Okay, I'm going to push down with this and start. Oh. Now you will end up like we are going to, I'll show with like a little slice of carrot. You can kind of see it right here. Actually, I don't think we need a close up. Snackies. You end up with a snacky. My dog that passed, this was her favorite thing when I would do the food processor because she'd be like, ooh, oh. snacky. So that is, you know, I, I'm lazy. I'm going to be honest. And I do buy shredded carrots and cabbage. But like if I, I were going to do this, it's just, it's so quick, isn't it? Oh my, did you see how fast that is? And I'll yeah. show you in there. I am going to be coming over here to rinse things. And I want to tell you that if you don't listen to me about anything else, though I think you should, always rinse everything out. If not, then the stuff is going to harden on and it's going to make you unhappy. Don't make yourself unhappy when you can make yourself so easily happy. Another plus about this, most food processors have a hole. This doesn't. So when you take the blade out and stuff like that, and so this is the big shreds. And Cheryl last night wanted one of my oil-free carrot cake mug cakes. And you guys can get the recipe on healthy, slow cooking. Just look up carrot cake. And I didn't have any shredded carrots. Well, looky now. Now I do. So everybody and has that blade, but you're saying you purchase an extra smaller blade. For the dicing. We're not there yet, but yeah. Oh, just for the dicing, it's not just for the for shredding. The dicing. Mm -mm. Not for the not for the shredding. Okay. But all you have to do is flip it over. So we use the coarse one. You could get one smaller by just flipping that thing over and doing it. So this is I, incredible. I didn't realize this was two blades in one. Nobody does. Every time I do this in class. Oh my God, Kathy, every, you are like a genius. Okay, I'm going to um, rinse all this off. And okay, you're like, okay, lady, why are you like rinsing? I swear my house is a mess. I am not an OCD cleaner or anything like that. If you are, I'm happy to give you my address. Um, it's, it's well worth just to rinse it out. Do not have to scrub it. You don't need, like, look. I just rinsed. That was it. I didn't, I didn't even put anything in there except for that. Kathy, it's mine is so dingy. Is there a way to make it less dingy? I can look into that. My, my Vitamix is the same way. Yeah. So look at my Vitamix is pretty sad, but I also sometimes put my Vitamix into the dishwasher because sometimes I make things maybe that I'm, I'm trying to get the carrot juice off of the the counter before I have to scrub it too. Okay, so now if you're watching this and you don't even have a Breville yet, you already have a good tip, right? And the same thing with these Julienne blades is that thing, the um, this spindle and it goes here, you're gonna have cutting side up for all of those. Um, I've not used the French fry blade or the Julienne blade yet. Now, I'm trying to think of what we should, Let's, I got to get, turn this back to me. Chef AJ, when you're doing things and you turn them around, do you ever get a little bit confused? Always, yeah. <laughs> or is that just me? Always. Um, good. And so let's talk about one really important thing. Just slice me. Don't dice. Oh, here, let me get a better. There we go. Slice me. Don't dice me. So there is literally a handout saying don't dice the sweet potatoes. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, on the what's that thing that I have that the French fry cutter? Because I got that before this. It was like $70. It's the one you go like this. It said don't use sweet potatoes on it. But I found if you like microwave them for about a minute, you can. And you probably can hear, I will say this is super expensive and I'm not going to be testing it today, but there's going to be an in-between. So if you cook it too much, it's just going to smush. 
I watched some um, YouTube videos by some other people and I was, I saw one, don't go watch it, especially if you're vegan, but they, cause I thought it was a dumb idea. And I'm like, maybe I'm just not understanding the finesse. They took uncooked sausage and they were going to dice the uncooked sausage, which seemed silly. And it was. So if anything's too mushy, it's just going to mush together in the bottom. And now you have to clean all that mush out of the dicing blade. So I say, I vote no. I voted off the island. So you have all of this stuff, even if you don't have the peel and dice. Probably. You have most of these if you have any food processor. You may not have the julienne or the French fry blade, but most of these you're going to have. Okay. And with the Breville Sous Chef, regular, you've got that. So then we take this level of ordinary, amazing stuff off. And I want to show you something about this because I had someone ask and these things squeak really loud on the counters. And my friend Kathy made me these cute little um, patchwork things. So I've been using those to slide this without less. Um, okay. And in here, in this bottom one, we get the goodies that um, let's back a little bit. We get the goodies. So here is the dicing blade. This plastic thing here is the peeler. And I think you can see, you might be able to see where it says peeler. There you go. Wait, Got the so light that is that is this one then, Kathy? Yes, that's the peeler. And we are going to use that. How, um, does it, how does it peel anything? It's just a piece of plastic. Oh, it's, it, it peels potatoes. It's not going to peel everything. And you're, this, this is the one thing I want you to remember. Even though this is in here, it goes with nothing else in here. Everything else is the, is for the, the dice. So we're actually going to take whatever I call this, the little spindle from the top part. Fits in. Let's see if you can see it here. So we put the, that in the top part and then this comes over it and comes down about halfway. And we're gonna use it in a minute, but what I wanna show you, and this is something I didn't notice cause I had trouble. And when I asked um, people if they had any questions, they were like, I cannot get, cause I, I'm like, okay, and let's see if you can see it better this way. So, maybe maybe not so see how it sticks up and that other part is never going to go on the top and I was like wow and guess what can you see right there there's a little arrow yeah it's very small. okay it and says then, use with spindle yeah, so it tells you to use this, but you just need to see this arrow. So this is the arrow right here. And then look right there. There's an arrow on your thing. So I you go, oh, make it match. And now, I look. I don't even remember where this came Look, from. look, 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 look. But all right, this, this, you're, you're going to actually put these in the machine at some point and show us. Oh, yeah, 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 I promise. Um. The reason I'm doing that is because once it's dirty, then I'm not going to be putting it back in. I let everything dry very well before I put it in here because I don't want any of these blades to rust. This costs a lot. We're going to take good care of it. Okay. So now I'm going to move that peel out. But if Wait. you if you're having so, trouble, so Kathy, this is this goes in this part, right? Yes. So, so see how so see the little arrow on the plastic disc? Yeah. Point it towards the little white arrow on the um, mm -hmm. packaging and put it on that, that little holder thing, holder spindle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. And you feel it, then it's solid in there. Oh, this is, this. <laughs> okay, you think this would be easy, but. Ah, yes, it works, guys. Yeah. What Kathy said. Okay, so the trick is, and I'm telling you this not because I magically put it in there right the first time. I like tried for 20 minutes and I'm like, I'm an idiot. 
And, but I did not see that, that arrow, which is why I'm pointing it out to you. Look on the plastic disc for the arrow, make it match with the white arrow. So we're going to set aside the peel disc for a minute. And is this going somewhere too? Oh and yeah. We're, we're getting ready to do all the things. And this Yep. You should do like videos like for dummies videos for every I'm machine. Well, I think I'm going to do uh, a little bit about all the pieces and stuff. I think I'm going to do a lot. Do it's you remember confusing. when I called you up because I couldn't figure out my Ninja Creamy and <laughs> it didn't work and it turned out because I didn't put the blade in? But you know what? It's happened to everyone. It's not a big deal. Okay. So let's get this. So when you look in here, let's let's do that first. Okay, now we've taken out the one peeling disc, which is the only thing down there. So this is our um, dicing spindle. I don't know what this is, but this was in the side and I'm keeping it. So I haven't figured that one out yet. But this is to help knock things down. So we're going to use it inside of here. So on the top, I kept for all of these these little plastic things that cover the blades because you have to kind of get close and you're touching them, right? So be careful. This comes off and I would keep it. And I'm going to, after I wash it and it dries, I put it back on so I won't cut myself. Right. And what, this is the, blade is it, which blade is that? I don't think I have that. Yeah, you do. It's at the, it's in the bottom here. Like un, take out the um, peeling disc and set it aside. Oh and my you God, there's a whole other disc under there. Oh, there's two discs right here. And that's what's going to be interesting. And it's like, it's like I have Christmas again. I have all this stuff. I didn't Yay. Okay. So again, we're going to pull this up. I recommend highly saving these so you don't slice your finger off. You do you, but it's not my fault. So what you want to notice is that that hole in the disc is 12 millimeters. So with these extra discs that I have, I have both sets of these. So, okay, so we've got this. I'm going to set that aside for a second, put this plastic aside so I can put it back on. This is the dicing disc. This is the safety. This is, again, a piece of plastic that we keep to make it easier. Also, I want you to notice that came off of this side. Put it this way. Caution, sharp blades. It points which side is the sharp blade. Okay. Meaning, the stuff I'm pointing towards you, that's where the blades are. I can touch the back of this. Better not to. So if I need to shake some water off, sharp side away from you. What if you slipped? You could hurt yourself. Okay. So we, we know what these parts are. This is a 12 millimeter, this is a 12 millimeter. That's how it's gonna make a perfect dice. So, to put it together and we'll dice something and then, then I'll show you what this guy does. So we're not forgetting him. So we put this spindle in, which is, does it say? No, it just says not dishwasher safe. Okay, we put that spindle in. And then let me move. Okay, so that's the short spindle, though, but it, it's the one that no, comes with. It's it's the, the geared spindle inside the bottom compartment. It's kind of, it's a little chunkier. And it's like triangular instead of just round. Yep. It's like this. It's kind of like big and heavy. Yes. Yes. It's no joke. And also I'm moving, the base of this is so heavy. I'm moving it around on one of those little things you can get that helps things slide around. Hey, Kathy, that when I put not... it in, but when I put it in, it doesn't turn. Yeah. Do I have it in wrong, maybe? Nope. Look, it's not turning for me either. Oh, so it's not supposed to turn. Mm -mm. You get in the head. Sorry, teacher. I just, I just want to know so bad how to do it. <laughs> Look at you being all like super smart. Okay, so we've got this guy in, and yes, it doesn't move. And notice this, this says this way up. Now, where, where so I'm going to drop that yeah. on. This, this is, I call spindle. this the shoehorn. So this is the shoehorn. Okay. And basically what this does is it just goes around. Let's see where you can see it this way. It's going to go around in a circle. 
and it knocks all the stuff down into the bowl so it doesn't just all get here and heap over it it makes it kind of go but, around but it doesn't move does it because mine doesn't move it's not at this point but oh, it, wow. it, it'll all work don't worry okay. i just can't believe it it's like amazing okay. okay all right then oops let me go overhead view again then we're going to put in So Kathy, this one is the one that comes with it. You bought different sizes. The two that yes. you put extra, are they bigger than this or smaller than this? One of each, one bigger, one smaller. Because this seems to me like it might be the perfect size. Like if you wanted to cut tomatoes for salsa, would you agree or? We could try that for sure. Okay. And so I think I have this ring. Okay. So this is in now and this actually does turn. Is that how it's supposed to be? Like this? Doesn't. Boom. I'm like, yeah, I'm like I let me right? double check. Let me make sure I'm not messing up. But I'm pretty sure I'm doing, I've done this a bunch of times, but I've only had it for a little while. It yeah, says the dicing grid. So yeah, if no, I'm doing it right. Kathy, if there's an arrow, an upside down triangle, that means it goes this way, right? Well, except for it shows on the these dicing blades, it shows you which way is sharp. So you want the sharp up. You're kidding. Oh, wow. I would have done it backwards. So it says, caution, sharp blades. Oh, so it goes the other way. Right. And you'll see too. So look, so right now we have this in here, but this is also going to go on here. Oh, so you need this one too? Yeah. So, so basically we're cutting. So I'll show you from the top too. It's going to cut slices in the top and dice in the bottom is how it works so we want to have the sharp part up so the okay. arrow is up and you'll say caution sharp blades where you can read it if you can't read it and it's upside down then your blade is upside down yeah it does say this way up and then this goes on top yeah so we're going to have the sharp blade part i can't see yours but let's watch mine so where it's going to cut it goes on the top there. So blade is up. Hmm. How do you get it to fit on the other piece? You kind of have to move it around because it's a square on there and it's a square on here. So you just kind of have to move it until it fits just Shoot, right. Mine doesn't seem to go in. Okay. Now let's check your dicing blade. Okay. So let's go. So what may have to happen and you, can you, move your dicing blade because if you can it's yeah that's our problem you want to so be able to move it or no you don't want to be able to move it oh i thought you did okay. okay so let's look at this all right and i think you can see it here okay see right in there and here like on the sides and then the front of the um, plastic thing there's some little holders and if you look at the blade there's some little holders there too so those holders fit just right on there. This is why people buy store-bought salsa. Okay. Get uh, out. I got you. Got y'all. Kathy, I can't get this piece on it. And okay. I think you're doing it upside down, but let's make that one's not moving. Oh, you, do down. not touch that blade, Chef AJ. Okay. Those blades oh, wait, are really am I sharp. supposed to take this black plastic? Yes. Yeah. Ah. All the plastic comes off. Well, and then cool. look, Chef AJ, it goes, look, this, oh, I had it upside this way. Down. Yeah. Well, see, do you understand how like inept I am? But Kathy, I did it. Yay, mommy. <laughs> of course you did. I had no doubt. Oh my God. Now, I'm going to grow. I wanted to saute some onions tonight because we're having like, my smoky sweet potato burgers and this could already be set up. Like, yeah, like I mean, absolutely. I don't do anything. Do you? Okay. Wait I, sorry, I, it's just I love. Yeah, I got so many questions. And I, I can, when you saute onions, or when you chop onions, like let's say, do you like to do them in like a square shape, or do you like to do them more like long? You know what I mean? Cheryl will. All, it's so I live with a picky eater. So she, Cheryl thought the dice on this one was too big for soup. So that is why I spent one hundred and thirty dollars to buy a smaller blade just for her to do onions. 
Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, okay. Winter Solstice, all the holidays to her. But um, I think this is a normal size. I think if you if you did not buy this other dicing kit, I also, when I first got it, I opened it up, I diced potatoes, carrots, and yellow beets. And then I cooked them with some French lentils and tarragon, and it was delightful. And I thought they were all a really good size. I was thinking, and I was thinking maybe while we were here, I'd try the bigger size with some potatoes and I'd try the smaller size. I've got some onions ready to go and we can try some tomatoes. I, yeah. now, I, I'm, I, I'm surprised that beets are okay when beets are to me sometimes even harder than sweet potatoes, it seems. It has to do with the fibrousness of it. So beets are a little easier to, I also, I guess this is a small story. I have um, a KitchenAid and I got one of those spiralizers that go onto the KitchenAid. I got a big old sweet potato stuck on it. It took Cheryl a week to get that thing carved off of it. And so sweet potatoes just are a little bit harder because they're so fibrous. Even okay. though beets are hard, potatoes can be hard, but it's just one of the things. Now, I've not done tomatoes, so we're going to do these together. I got some of those vine-ripe tomatoes from Costco. Mm -hmm. I was thinking and, like if I could, because those Roma would fit so easily in the shoot. But see, remember, you've got all this. That's true. Do you? But you know what? I'm, I'm curious, because to me, tomatoes, like when I slice a tomato, I often use a serrated knife because tomatoes can be so smushy. How is it going to cube the tomatoes without just smushing it? Let's find out. Now, a couple of these are fairly soft, even though I just got them yesterday. But let's, this one's pretty firm. Let's do him first. So I'm just going to, let's see, he's going to fit in that way. And this is crazy. And this is why I have this other view for you guys. So you can just really see here what's going on. Let's do it that way. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on Chef AJ Live, peel <laughs> and dice. <gasps> Is that not the best thing ever? It's salsa. And look, let's see, I might be able to, I can fit two of these little ones in. So um, I'll show you from this camera. So see two small ones fit in. And we'll go here. Clomp, clomp, clomp. There's a little bit of that. That one is soft and there is a little piece of it, but I, you can kind of see a little piece is still there, but I think we can get it to slice through with something else. But look at that. Look at it, I tell you. And obviously if you want it to be, you know, a little more, firm and not have any of these issues, then let's see if we can get this one done. Then just use firmer tomatoes. Let me get these. Let's see if these two will fit. And notice how it stops when I pull this out. It's a safety measure. Okay. So we still have that one piece of kind of soft tomato. And we'll look at that over here. Okay, so as I take this off, see how we have a little bit of a soft piece? Might, I don't know if it'll go in. But I could try one more time. I just barely slid it. Yeah. And usually when you use a food processor, you're gonna have a couple of pieces. I'm gonna, um, leave you with this while I just rinse. Let me just take this and rinse this top part off real quick. And I'm just gonna sit this. I would just chop it up for a salad. Or again, snackies. Snackies should not be overrated, especially when they're vegetables that you're popping in your mouth, is the way I see things. I don't think you would say no to a little snacky of a bite of carrot. Yeah. Or tomato, no, right? Not at all. So, and it's, kind, I think it's kind of amazing. Let me get another bowl for this. I knew <laughs> I've got bowls hidden everywhere because I knew we'd need a lot. Okay, so 
we're going to have to rinse all these blades again, but there's one really important thing and I shouldn't have left that over here. So we're going to keep this pusher. And this is one thing I said we would use again. So you're going to have this with you. And let's look here. Okay. So I'm just going to take this off and set it aside. Maybe pour those little seeds in there. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and rinse it. I want you to, to look for a second and you're like, well, that's a mess I don't want to deal with. Isn't that what you're saying to yourself right now? Well, that how does that help me? Trust me, Breville got you. <laughs> and I think this part is kind of brilliant. So that's what the other part is for. That's what this part is for. Yeah, Notice I was wondering what that was. And it says 12 millimeter too. So it goes, you can put it on the bottom of this. And then we're going to go through, just gonna pull this. Actually, let's do it from the side. You can see that. So I'm going to push it through. I don't know if you saw any of the stuff coming through. So you see, push, look. you put this on the bottom of your pusher. Yep. And then see, watch, you can see me do it kind of through here. Oh my God. And you don't have the electricity on for that. You're just pushing by nope. hand. And I'm short. So I, I, sometimes I miss, but look how much is already gone in there. So basically it's not that big a deal. Some things that you're going to have to rinse off and like just then, sometimes it'll try and come up. Be careful because this is sharp. Don't, don't be just grabbing on there with your hands or I will come to your house and tell you not to stop it. <laughs> is anybody else's mind blown? I wonder how many people have not used this because they had fear or did not know how. And you remember when we talked about the end of this, if something gets stuck, you can help clean it out this way, right? So by that, I mean, go to the next camera, please. There we go. So like, see this? This will go through there. Ah. Look at all that that just came out, right? So it helps you clean this. Also, I'm going to go rinse it off and then I'll bring it back to show you too. And then um, I'm going to take this guy in case I need it. And it just comes off just like there's a little, at the ends, there's some pads. But if I have the spray on, it usually gets most of it. But if a couple of, it's usually like difficult peels or something like that, I can just come in and use this guy and then it's all done. And how do you yeah, wash that was, it, Kathy? Do you, you don't wash it in the dishwasher, right? Just in the sink with no. soap and water? No, it costs too much to wash in the dishwasher. That's 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 how I feel. So this now too, there's still some stuff on here. So the top blade is sharp, but we can come along here with our little spatula and get some of this back off too. You could take a toothpick and push some things through if it didn't go all the way through. Usually it's skins that get tangled up, you know, like skins that are a little bit soft, but I'm going to rinse this off and I'll show you just how hard that was. Cause you're watching me. There's, I'm not switching discs or anything. So you're going to want to rinse through on one side and then rinse through on the other side. And if there's some little things hung, then you can use, I have another one. You can use one of those. And you could be using soap at the same time and it could just be done. Like, hello, thank you. I'm done. There's a couple, here we go. There's just a couple of little piece skins and I like to try and get it really as well done as possible. So I'm being a little extra because it's new and I paid a lot of money for it. So, so that's how I roll. <laughs> but now I put my Vitamix in the dishwasher, right? So, so it's only a matter of time before I'm a little harder on it. But just like with your good knives, and I do find with these dicing blades, you wanna look from side to side to make sure that you're getting all the stuff out. It's gonna get hung on the bottom or on the top. So if you go back and forth, that'll be really good. And we've got this guy. 
So what he did is he helped spread this around. And that's all. We're going to rinse these guys. And I don't have to worry about pulling this guy out with all this liquid because it's not a hole. Like a lot of them have holes. And that's not helpful. Okay. And I'm going to put that in here. another spatula and you could freeze these you could make pasta sauce you can make salsa you could have done onion I'm not I was going to make salsa for you again but Cheryl hates onion so you, I would use the same dice for onion and maybe put a jalapeno in there maybe mince some of that up so would you put the jalapeno in through the peel and dice or just do that by hand how spicy you like it would be your answer. I mean, like, <laughs> Probably what, not. What I meant is because it's so small, would the peel and dice feature even work on it? I think this one wouldn't, the eight millimeter might, but isn't that crazy how little time it took? And that was with me explaining and talking. If you were just doing it without all that yammering, it would be done in seconds. Um, and while, yes, there is some cleanup involved, I find personally, like, again, I try to go from the easiest to clean up to the hardest to clean. So, Kathy, you're going to you're going to keep that blade on now, right? And maybe show us either an onion or a potato for a cubing or a zucchini. I'm going to show you from the I'm going to try out my new blades because they work exactly the same. So you can use your 12 and I'm going to use the eight. Mm. So your smaller one is eight and what size is your bigger one? 16. Wow. And I've not used these. I just got, these just came in a couple of days ago. So, and I'll, and I can bring out the other blade to show you. So, so this came with its, this came with its own little case. And I want you to notice the reason it's color coded is so you won't get them mixed up. It does say on the thing 16 and 8. And just like the others, notice I have those blade covers that I'm putting back for storage. I highly recommend that. Why am I saying that? Because Cheryl's going to cut herself if she doesn't have it. So someone at your house will too. So this is the 8 millimeter. And notice it's a little bit smaller. This is the bigger one. And no, here I'll bring the other blade over. The big one looks quite big. What would you use it for? And do you think you could use this to cut watermelon? I think so, but I don't know. That could be something that we look at. I know I still have one tiny piece of tomato in here. So see, these are the comparison. This is the one, the black one is the one that comes with yours. If that's a great size for you and you don't need to have your onions diced like Cheryl does, you probably don't need this. Mm. Okay. However, since I have it, I want to show you so you can decide if you need it. But see, like, see, so those pieces of onion Cheryl was starting to pick out. If they're too big, she'll pick them out. I usually dice or mince them for her. So I want to try this, this eight. And even inside this, here inside of here again we have two of those pushers right because they've got to fit inside oh. these size holes so everything is kind of exactly the way it needs to be okay so we'll put this one let me see we'll put this one back and if you're like i was trying to figure out well how do i know where it goes we'll see how it has that little thing out there it has a place for it it doesn't really show you per se. And I did wash these already. And I do need my little pusher blade, I think. Let's get that out of the sink. And then we're going to do a whole bunch. Where oh, are you, little pusher? Did I bring you back already? I hope then, you'll show us maybe the French fry blade too, because I had no idea that was even in there. Sure, we can try it. I've never used it. So. 
let's let's live big oh here it is and also we okay. are you going to show the peeling too because i can't yeah I can't figure out how to use this peeler blade as well do you have a next show that we have to finish if you don't no. we can keep going no, no it's okay you're my you're my last customer okay i gotta That's learn like this because i haven't used it and see did you notice i tried to put this up the wrong way on i tried to put it this way and it wasn't going to work and what happens is this this little this little blade there's a little there's a little silver thing so this covers the little silver thing at the bottom all right then we are going to put on our slicey dicey or right, we're going to put on our dicey we're going to put on a slicey on top of that and so I need to look at this, this way up, right? So we want the blade part up. So I want to see, be able, if I can't read this, it's not right. So I'm going to take this and then there's these little notches. You see the notches in every corner. There's a notch in every corner here. So we're going to match that up. So this is just the same. So like what I do when I do this in the Ninja Creamula is I'll take it and I'll twist it till it gets in because I can't always see where it is. See how that works. Then we're going to take this blade and it's going to be slicey side up. Right. And we've got that done. Okay. So now we're going to put this on. And I have, I'll show you over here. I have some onions and basically I just cut off the ends and took the skin off and I cut them in half because they were just a little bit too big to go in the big chute. So what I'm going to kind of do, we, I'm going to move this again. So we can have this here. Okay. Sometimes, and I don't know if this will work, we can often put them in this way. Get in there the way I want you to get in. So that I can still often do an onion at a time. I may not be able to, it's gonna depend on the size. If I do it back and forth like that, and yeah, so see how I've got it all set in there, ready to go, turn start, take that out, it stops. And this is you know about... This Six is onions. amazing. At Rancho La Puerta, they cut everything by hand for the salsa every day. This would revolutionize their salsa making. And one of the things I do, and I used to do this by hand, but I cut up onions like this, and then I put them in the freezer. Doesn't seem like, can you see the little blades swinging around? Yep. Okay, so it does swing around when this is only when this top part is engaged. So I think this was about six or seven onions in like, what, a minute? Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch. Let's open this up. Every, there's going to be some here, right? Just remember, we always have snackies. I'm going to rinse this off. And normally I would do onions last, but peeling the potatoes makes a mess. So I'm leaving it for last. That's Wait, why I'm choosing. When you say that. peeling them, do you mean peeling them with the breville or peeling them by hand or both? Peeling them with the breville. We're going to oh. get there too. Okay. Oh my gosh. So again, carefully take this out. That's sharp. It's going to cut you. So if you want, you can. So I'll put that over on my cutting board with my other snackies. And we've got this and you're like, sometimes you can even do it a little bit like this. It just depends. I can't see, feel where it is. 
There we go. I'm going to get the top part. It's a little easier. And also, you don't want your hand to slip. There we go. See how I was able to wiggle it in? Ta-da! And it's a matter of finding exactly where you should be. There we go. And you do need to do this every time that you do the dicing blade. And it, it means you're not wasting stuff too. So I like it. Food costs too much now to waste it. Okay. And we've got that. I clean that off. And look at all this. Is that not crazy? That is something. And so when I did my dehydrator class, I used um, a chopper. I think I have the chopper over here now. <laughs> trying to remember where I, oh, I, think, I think. And the OXO chopper is great, but I gave myself tendonitis using it. Oh, here it is. And so if you're like, I want chopping action, but I'm not buying the Revel. This is my favorite chopper. Why? You know how I showed you how we go through with that tool. This pulls out. So it pulls all that stuff out. Also, counterintuitively, there is a hole here. So first you're like, well, my stuff's going to spill out. However, you just shake it in the bowl. There you go. So I did a, a restaurant sized bag of onions in that, and it was a lot. Okay, so again, we'll get this guy, rinse him off. Have you ever sauteed and then froze? Darshana said you could do that. I've never done that, but I think it would be a great idea. You can. And you know what I did in my dehydrator class that I was so excited about? So, and I may do this with this, these, I haven't decided yet. Have a whole bunch of onions like this, chopped up however you want them or sliced. If you want the big, long strips, look at all those onions. Do you know how much time it would take to cut that up? I feel like I'm on Ronco now. But I'm being serious. I hate chopping things up by it's hand. Terrible. If you wanted most strips, though, you'd use the slicing blade, right? Exactly. What I would do personally is I would cut the onion in half or in quarters, depending on how long you want those strips, then put it down the chute that way. Okay. Um, and you asked me a question and I totally forgot it. I'm so sorry. Can you repeat your last um, question? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So about this, maybe <laughs> of the slicing would be the slicing blade. Um, something about the peel and dice or the peeling the potato or peeling potatoes. Yeah, it's late, isn't it? This is why I'm all I'm never on this. Line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's do the big blade, just so I can make a mess with all the things I have and clean them because that's you are my exciting end of the week endeavor and I thought let's see I'm trying to decide what I want to actually use but okay so again we're going to put this on so this way everybody sees this thing a few times got our triangle blade or not our blade but the blade holder Kathy, okay, we're got... asking if your little chopper's name is XOXO, OXO? OXO, yes, it is yeah. the OXO one. I got mine at Ross's. It's twice as much at Amazon. So if you've got a Ross, go to your Ross. Okay, so I'm going to take, again, these blade covers, once I clean, I'm going to drain them on a dish towel oh. until they're completely dry. And then I'm going to store them with these blade covers on again. Okay. Same way as we've been doing. Hey, the Thank you, live viewing audience. They said I was asking you about sauteing and then freezing. Thank you. So what I was going to say is I did a bunch of diced onions that I used the OXO chopper for, put them in the slow cooker, cook them overnight to caramelize them. Just this, you didn't need to add in the slow cooker. You don't need to add anything else. And I dehydrated them. Ooh. So what was and that I, like? Oh, I can show you. 
Do, do, do. This is just some of them. Oh my, they're the best chips. Oh, so, but, okay. So they're not soft at all for like burgers. Um, They were before I dehydrated them. You could freeze them instead of this, but I actually made, look at that. And listen, here, I'm going to show hey, what they say. That, that'd be like great for like turkey onions, like on a green bean casserole. Mm-hmm. Listen, it's like it's, it's delightful. I also, in my um, mason jar soup class that there's a link to, because it's on sale for $15, I made French onion soup with this and dried mushrooms and other things like that class was crazy like Cheryl oh. and I last night I made this is instant tomato soup like and Cheryl says it tastes like Campbell's oh my gosh and I made one that tastes like La Madeleine's with basil so that class is fire it's already recorded and I got crazy and I even did two extra ones in class and they're cheap you can make them for yourself or you can make them for presents but mine are over there and we've cooked a few of them already. And you guys who watch, who was hanging out for the, the cozy holiday chat last night saw us eating. I made um, oil-free chickpea sliceable cheese. Ooh. So we, and so we made on um, no oil Ezekiel bread. I used the panini press and we made grilled cheese sandwiches and had um, compliant tomato, new, tomato soup. So anyone who says, it's too hard to eat this way. No, it's not. So <laughs> it's not as bad and I will help you. But evidently I can't read that this way is up. When when Chef AJ asked me what time, I was like, I can't do it after X time. I can't have sharp implements in my hand. <laughs> so this is the 16 inch blade. I still haven't decided what I'm cutting with it. But again, we're going to have it. Let's see where that arrow is pointing up and you can read the words. So that, and then also we've got these little notches and notches here. So I drop it, turn it till it clicks, just like I show you how to do the Ninja Creamy. Then this one, the scary blade part goes up and this goes on. Oops, I moved it. And let's just do a potato, maybe. Let's get it this way so you can see better. I'm like, I feel like here's one. I don't care if it gets washed all these. I'm trying to find. They, have you been noticing when you buy potatoes, sometimes they have too many eyes just out of the bat? Mm -hmm. They're better to see you with. Wow. <laughs> I just got the coolest from the Halloween t-shirt shop. I got five new Halloween t-shirts and one has a nutcracker on it. So I'm so happy. So see, I'm putting this in here. We're just going to do one potato on it because we're going to do other cool things. Again, start. Done. Did you say it was just one potato? Granted. But and there's there's a snacky piece. So what I would do with this, honestly, is I would cut it up close enough and throw it in my soup. That's what I would do. But you can do whatever you want. And let me get this guy because we need to have the one that matches it. And again, if you don't have this Dyson kit, you're gonna have one. So you're not gonna have all these unless you want them and Cheryl wants them. <laughs> what Cheryl wants sometimes Cheryl gets especially when it comes to food she's the pickier eater so I don't know if you could hear some of that sometimes you can hear it Let's see if that's better. there we go and now see there's almost nothing there for me to rinse out And there are our little cubes. And I'm going to air fry these and probably air fry more than these. But you could do up, instead of buying already cubed shredded potatoes, 
why not get a whole bunch done like this? And so that's and, the 18 millimeter, right? Or the 18 inch? 16 millimeter. Okay, that's the big one. And those are cubed. If you're going to dehydrate those or air fry those, you're going to, you're not going to cook them first, right? I wouldn't as small as they are. And I'm just moving some of this over here. So I don't accidentally cut myself on any of them. Um, Cause you can do it a lot of different ways, really, actually. Part of me just wants to do that. Now, nah, nah. just hold back. You know how I get, I'm like, maybe we should cut more stuff. But how about we peel something? Yep. Do and you I, actually read the book that comes with it? Is that how you figure this out? I read. If I have a question, I do read it. Um, some, like I read what orders the, the discs went in. And I'm going to show you two things. One is how you're supposed to do these. The other one is I tried the other night and it sort of worked. And then also when we're at the end, we can, we can compare the different sizes of these dices. Now, this is going to make a little bit of a mess, this peeling. But I want you to think of something. Does it, is it not make a mess when you peel the potatoes, when you peel a lot of them? Of course it makes a mess. Okay. So we've got that peeling disc from the bottom, the main spindle from the top as far as the layered accessories go. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here. I'm gonna drop this here. So what you need to do, so yellow fin potatoes are perfect. They're supposed to be fist sized, okay? And that would mean these russets, I washed these potatoes. These russets, not fist size, kind of two fist size. So the other day I cut them in half and it worked okay. So I figured we'd do that too. So we've got this set up here. Let me show you from the top. I have so much kitchen gunk on the mouse that sometimes it's, it hesitates. So you want to kind of put things like size. So I'm not going to put the smallest one and the biggest one in at the same time. Let's put the small one. Let's see if those four will go. And sometimes you can get five. You can do smaller ones. The more round they are, the less you're going to have to use your peeler. And you'll see what I mean. So we're going to do this. They're going to be covered with gunk. But we rinse them. Then we lick at them. So all of that can go right into a jar to go into the compost. So I'm going to close this. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Let's see if you can see. It sort of can, right? So we've got power on start. I'm going to turn this to 25 seconds, which seems to be working about right. Since these are not perfect in size, they may not do it perfectly. So it's important to put the timer on when you're doing this. What happens if you don't? Does it go too long? Or because you could stop it manually, right? Yeah, you could stop it, but then you just have to pay attention. Why not let it count for you? And so you're so what you're saying is the way to put the timer on is you put the on button on and then you just put it on uh, on the number of seconds you want. Yeah, you just press it and it goes up five seconds each time that you press it. Oh. And that's that's right over here. See how it says 25 now? I'm going to put it over here and it's going to be a little bit loud and it's a little bit chaotic. I've never done one so big and one so small in the same time. So we'll find out if it works good. I peeled potatoes like six times since I've gotten it. So can you peel without dicing or is it has to be both? I can't quite hear you, but if you wouldn't mind re-asking what yeah. you just said. I said, can you peel potatoes without dicing in that? Or do you have to do both? Nope. Look. Wow, that is just crazy. Okay. And like you do have a lot of debris. This is all debris I'm going to put in the compost anyhow. Right. So 
is it possibly taking off a couple of pieces extra? Maybe, see how there's a few little pieces of skin? I'm gonna take these three. But see, yeah, see, why, why peel potatoes? I mean, I literally can't think of one recipe I've ever made where I've peeled them. I always use the skin, especially if it's a Yukon Gold. And there's, you don't have to peel potatoes. Cheryl prefers her mashed potatoes without peel. Boy, she's a real, real picky person, isn't she? Yes, she is. <laughs> let me, <laughs> let me well, then you, Yeah, then you tell her she's got to peel her own darn potatoes. And so, oops, here, let me come back. Um, also, if they're just a little dirtier, like these were starting to have some surface eyes. So that's just one less thing I have to do. So see, this is one before I rinse it. See how much rinsed out. And then I just make sure that my strainer in the sink is clean so I can take clean out that strainer and put it right in my compost. Um, if you're not getting organic potatoes, you might want to peel them. If they're looking a little old or kind of gross, you might want to peel them. Let's try putting this one big guy. I've never tried one just in there by himself. And let's see what happens. And while he's doing that, I'm going to take the little peeler, probably net. You don't need to see me. I'm going to peel off the little pieces. Trust me on this. So I'm going to go back to 25. And I'm going to hit start. Oh, escaping potato. But then you could dice them if you wanted to, but you don't have to. And I know there's a lot of nutrients in um, potato skins. And sometimes it just depends. I definitely peel, like I've been getting some nasty russet potatoes like russet potatoes that aren't even lasting a week because they're just rotting as soon as they get them in the house. So that is also making me a little more prone to peel at the moment too. So let's take a look how did it do with the one big guy. And oh, not bad at all, huh? Look at that. Look, it's really good. There's one, there's one place I'm gonna peel. Let me rinse him. And then I thought we'd try cutting some of these russets in half. These particular russets, again, are new and kind of disgusting. I did um, rinse them, <laughs> but there's a couple of places that on the skins that have a little bit of mold that I'm just not feeling super good about. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna cut it in half to we could even try cut it in three, but cutting it in half makes it almost like a Yukon Gold, right? So let's take two of these. And I did wash these, even though they look horrible. And I've been all about the mashed potatoes since it's gotten cooler here. Have you ever made, mashed, have you ever oh. made mashed potatoes from mashed potato flakes? Yes. They're and in so fact, good. why would anybody make them any other way? <gasps> They're yeah. better with real potatoes. I don't know, Kathy. I have 35 people here for Thanksgiving. There was no way I could make that many mashed potatoes. And everybody said, oh, it was the best mashed potatoes I ever had. I just bought the Whole Foods and they only have them at Whole Foods around the holidays and literally one ingredient. And I use part milk, you know, meaning plant milk and part water. I mean, they were so creamy and so fluffy. And then I, you know, I baked them. I like twice baked them. People went nuts. There's no shame in it, however. Like you can dice your butternut, peel and dice your butternut squash yourself or buy it frozen, already peeled and diced. I'm never going to give anybody any flack about something like that. And see, because you would not have been able to put the whole potato in. I feel clever. I'm sure I'm not the first one. There's a little more skin on these like that, but still that's a lot. I'm going to have to peel that piece and that piece. And eventually, I think about now, this is getting full. And I'll, let me rinse these and then I'll show you what, what all the skins look like. And again, what I would do for sure is compost it. Or if it's not, like I feel like this skin, the, the Yukon Gold skin or yellow fins, I totally would have just taken that, 
cooked it up or put it in some dog treat. This one, like I said, I didn't feel so great about all the skin, but see, there are some pieces, but it's very few. So if you're like, that's not good enough for me, then that's okay, you don't have to use it. So I'm gonna take this out and then let me grab my compost. There may, I don't think there's, yeah, there's just a, some onions from me doing the onions. So you're not gonna see any really disgusting compost stuff. It's fresh. And then I just go ahead and push most of this in here, take this out. And then you can reuse it. It's a little bit wetter, right? Because we wash those potatoes. Yeah, and then I, I can. I appreciate you teaching that, but I honestly don't think I'm going to do that. You know, oh, it's my new favorite thing to peel I potatoes. Feel, wow. Well, the russets are not nice here. Like okay. I feel like all year I've had really bad russets. Um, I'll talk. I've had really bad russets and I've just not been happy with eating any of the skins on them. You, and I've not been finding any good organic ones. I've got them at Aldi's, at Lidl's, at Harris Teeter. I mean, just like, I don't know if it's a potato thing going on or if it's just where we are, we're not getting potatoes well. But with the, the yellow ones, the only reason I wanted to show you those is because those are the perfect size for this auto peel, if that makes sense. But really what we've done, we've used everything. Oh, you wanted me to use the Julianne blade, didn't you? Yeah, and the French fry. And we went, you're, you're here, we got you here. So we may okay. as well. The then I got to clean this present. up. I was going to be like, oh, I don't have to do that. Now I can be like, Chef AJ makes me do all the things. No, I'm always happy. This, let me show you this too. This is a little hard. You really have to take the spindle and push and twist to get this back off. And I mean, it's not super hard, but compared to the ease of everything else coming off. And again, it's always better to rinse off all these tiny little pieces because I'm going to be sad or have to soak some of the blades that I'm not rinsing off immediately tonight. And I'm only doing that for your benefit. Do you ever soak it or you just wash it right away with soap and warm water? I wash it right away. Let me see. That's got a little bit of water to pour out. And let me go back into my other blades and get a couple of things. So this, when we're looking at this, this, um, I believe those blades come with the, without the dicing kit. I think they come in just the regular sous chef. Actually, like, Looking at that potato, like, do I have another potato that I think is less gross? And it's my potatoes, y'all. It's it's not all potatoes. It's just that's the way it's been. So I'm going to come in here and I'll get the julienne blade and the French fry blade out. And that's just at the top level. And so you can see, if you look at them this way. You can see, see the, how much bigger the holes are in this one than this one. And it says French fry. So let's try the French fry first. So, so does a French fry blade, that's different than the Julianne blade or are they the same? Basically? Yeah, no, they're different. This is the Julianne blade and you can see how it's smaller, yeah. kind of like the way the grating blade, there was the small side and the large side, only these are two different ones. Okay. Oh, I gotta rinse this off too. So you actually haven't done French fries yet. I have not. It's gonna be exciting and new. And Cheryl is gonna have a fit about me having all this trash in the sink. <laughs> so somebody has to send Cheryl a nice note so that she can put up with me. Okay. So then I, after you have that, you're just gonna put this on here. And let's come back over here. 
I have heard mixed results with this and let's just try, let's try a short, should we try the short potato? Let's try and you're laying it lengthwise like this is gonna give us a longer cut because it's coming around this way. But you could so you could do it with non-peeled potatoes if you wanted, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So there was that. And we can also, <laughs> and again, so you can see where one's kind of stuck here. It's pretty good, considering it was just a little Yukon gold potato. Look at that. Oh, let me get you up, up above. So pretty good. The length is going to depend on what part of the potato it got, right? So some of them are not as consistent as the dice. Let's go ahead and let me, I don't want to use one of the potatoes I washed because I don't think they look very good. How big? Is there a smaller one? I just want to try this. I'm going to rinse it. Yeah, this one isn't bad. And we'll leave the skin on and we'll see what happens, but I'm going to scrub it. There is also an OXO brush set and I found a backup at Ross's that I always use to clean my milk maker and my potatoes and stuff like that. And it's just this little two brush set. How is and, it that when you walk away, we can still hear you so good? I've always wondered about that. Oh, because I have a, a wireless mic. Okay, I was gonna say because I can't I can't be trusted with it without it. Okay, so we're gonna put this on. I don't I'm gonna try to see how I can maximize this. Will this fit all the way in? And we'll put the French fry blade back in there. We want it laying down. It's gonna. That's good. Yeah. And this is really what you want to do if you're doing French fries, quite honestly. And again, you know, we have one. You can kind of see where the French fries are starting. See how it starts to cut. So you can really see how it cuts it, right? It pushes the potato through that way. And you're always gonna end up with a snack, but you know what, this snack, I can use the thing and I can just cut it into four pieces and that, or use those lines. Can you guys see that? There, you can kind of see it that way. It has some lines, so I could just cut it on there. And then because those are longer, look, those are real long fries. Oops, let's do it this way. Compared to how short, because it's, it's what, four times or three times the length of the um, yellow fin. Um, Susanna says, how will you cook those French fries, Kathy? In my air fryer, of course. And how would you season them? I don't, I, I like to put barbecue sauce and dip them into, so I don't put any seasoning on them. There's, you know, I can do a lot of different things. One thing that I want to play with, I tasted some of this when we were on vacation. This is not um, SOS compliant, but I am going to be making kind of a whole food plant-based SOS copycat. Spice wall is great. They do tend to use a lot of salt and sugar. So if that is not on your agenda, Make sure to read the labels carefully. But what was kind of cool, because I always like it, I used to like it a lot, you know, when you get fry seasoning places. And obviously I'm not eating those anymore. But there's something about the smoked paprika, some garlic powder, a few things like this. This has Aleppo pepper, coriander, sesame seed, orange juice powder, and, you know, a little bit of rice concentrate and citric acid. So I would maybe put a little lactic acid in there something like that. We pour these fries into another thing and we'll try a couple of these with the julienne blade and see what happens. Maybe we'll use that big carrot. 
Here's the carrot. If I do, I need to rinse all this. Eh. Yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> I'm going to be watching up as much as if I did a whole class tonight. But I kind of feel like I did that too when I did when I did our class. Was yeah. it last week or the week before? What are you guys going to have for dinner tonight? Because you've got tomato, you've got onion, you've got potato. Well, I definitely, I think we're going to do something with the fries. And I think I have some black bean sweet potato chili. Got to find one piece. Um, and I made, like I said, that um, chickpea cheese. So it's just chickpeas, spices. It does have some tapioca starch and some food grade carrageenan. You could use agar agar. You could use something else. What did I do? Hey, Kathy, do you, you and Cheryl go to the movies like outside of your house? We do sometimes. We haven't in a while, but it looked like there was a movie out right now that looked real. Oh, it's in here. You guys. I was looking for the thing that goes in here and it's in here. What looks good? What movie looks good to you? Cause that's, I mean, now that the pandemic's, I mean, I think it's kind of over. I've been going, I used to go all the time, like three nights a week and I'm just going crazy going to back to the theater. Oh, okay. So I'm going to tell you some, some holiday movies. Okay. One is weird and it, it has risque language, but it's hilarious. And it's like a satire of Hallmark movies. So I want everyone out there, if you're not okay with cursing or for maybe someone who's 60 to 70 years old to say something totally off the wall, this is not for you. Christmas with the Campbells. It makes me laugh. There's lots of cursing and some foul language. You mean like Colin and Karen Campbell and Nelson? No, and <laughs> no, no I hope not. And, and this is, is, a, this? is this a current movie or? Yeah, it's not out at the movie theater, but you can watch it on Hulu. And I think it's hilarious. But if you are not okay with, um, what do you, is it blue humor when it's a little? Yeah. Right. Um, but it's hilarious. You, it's, you, you don't see any naughtiness or anything like that. But the things that come out of this guy's parents' mouth blow my mind and make me laugh so hard. So that's one. The other is the, the. Princess Switch trilogy on Netflix. The first one, totally formulaic in the Hallmark style. Get through that one. I made Cheryl watch them two years ago because she's like, I don't want to watch that. Then the second movie, there's a nut, there's a cousin. So there's three people who look alike and she is just silly. And then the third one is like Mission Impossible meets a Hallmark movie. And it's ridiculous. The other thing that we like is Pottersville and it's it's very silly and fun so we were just talking about these movies last night let me get I am gonna get this carrot I'm gonna I'm gonna peel and cut him a little bit I think and I'm not gonna peel him in there because his skin is gonna be too hard so I'm just going to get this and, and we'll julienne the carrot let's see how that works I think that would be nice to have we can see how that is compared to the big dice. I don't always peel my carrots, but this one looks grody after I've already washed them. So, and also things like this, like if it's, if the peel isn't grody and you just don't want to have it, you can chop these up and put them in dog treats. Or you can dehydrate them in chips and let them have chewy, yummy sweet potato or carrots. And that's another thing you can do. I need one more cutting board. For those of you out there now, whenever you're like, why she gotta have another tool? Now you know I have so many of the same thing <laughs> for classes and things like this. So, I'm going to leave this as long as I can. I think I can cut it in half. I think that will work. This is a pretty hefty carrot. 
So I think what I might do is cut this part into three pieces because like, look, this, the bottom of this carrot is as big as a medium potato. A Ooh, carrot is a lot harder. Have you done parsnips or zucchini? Not in here, but they don't say you can't. So I think you can. I was thinking of cutting it into a third part, but we'll see. I don't think we need to cut this one in half. So lid. How many my watching have the Breville or the Breville sous chef or the Breville peel and dice? I'd love to know. And with the Breville sous chef that doesn't have the peel and dice, you can get a peel and dice kit. However, the peel and dice kit is another bowl and one set of blades and it's $200. Mm. So I'm, I'm not on that team right now. Is that going to fit that way? Uh, Susanna says, can you peel anything other than potatoes? I don't know if you can. I'm going to cut this in half because I want to lay flatter. Um, I saw a video where someone was peeling apples and that did not work out well because all that's going to do is bruise the fruit. So anything that you're like, if it gets tossed around crazy like that and it's not a good idea, I don't, I wouldn't recommend it. Let's see how I can get all that in there. I don't know. You might be able to do... I haven't tried beets or anything yet. It's not going to hurt them. I just don't know if the skin is thin enough because beet skin is pretty thick and takes a really good peeling. But um, as we do it, I'll be trying a few more things. What I will not be doing is doing something really trying to break it because this is my last food processor. So whereas sometimes I'm willing to do that unless Breville wants to send me one and we can go will it Breville and I have an extra one. <laughs> Then I will do all that thing. Okay, let's get a little closer. Get that little bottom part to engage in the back towards me. And there you go. <laughs> and, and so what, a, what shape is that? That's the julienne shape. So we've got the French fry shape. And see, I have a snack. Do you ever oh, see those? Like, do you ever see at the store? Like, at, oh, I see it at Winco and other stores. It's like it's like a circle, but it's like a ruffle chip kind of look. You know what I mean? You could do that. It has to be through. There's like a crinkle cut blade. Yeah, that's what I meant. Do they have a crinkle cut blade with this? No. Oh. You do with some mandolins and stuff, but also you can do like those crisscross fries you know those big fries that used to look like crisscross okay so this over here is the i'm trying to find a good here we go here's a nice long russet fry and we did this pretty long too so at the long parts this is a nice long carrot julienne so if you wanted to do like i don't know i'm thinking a nice julienne like that versus and here we go this will give you all you need to know this is the big shred the little shred with carrots often gets a little bit too moist and it just kind of crumbles together so i tend to like the bigger shred so it's just thicker it's about the same size but thicker um with the julienne blade i often wouldn't do much with it but you could do like zucchini, carrot, yellow squash, maybe broccoli stems, parsnips, beets, Brussels sprouts, if you want to do a little bit thinner. Because like one thing that's great to do is slice your Brussels sprouts instead of buying them already sliced. Because you just put, fill that thing up and dun, 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 sliced. But pretty much we've used everything. We used we didn't use the slicer, but I think you got, it works just the same way as the shredder does and you can adjust it. On all food processors, you can't adjust it. 
So just know that. But really, we've peeled potatoes. We've done the bigger dice with potatoes. Let me show you this too. So, so you've got here, this is the French fry blade, the julienne blade, the large dice blade. And let's take a look at the chops for the three different sizes. So there's the onions, and I think that's a really nice dice. Let me see if I can, you might be able to see it a little bit better here. So see, look how nice a dice that is. It's really nice and small. That's the tiny one. This is the larger one of potatoes. I can get a, get a piece of onion. And this is the tomato, which was the one that comes with it. And everything is, I mean, it's way more perfect than I would ever make anything in my life. But so those are the sizes. This would be great for stews. I think this like larger thing, I think the regular one is great for salsa and the smaller one is great for dicing. Because right now with Cheryl being so picky about sizes of things, but I think this gives you an idea. So would I have bought the extra two discs, which are these two, if I didn't live with Cheryl? No. Probably not. And I'd be fine with my potatoes this size and my onions this size. So what I want to be real clear of, I am not telling you that you have to buy those. However, if you have kids that are going to pick out onions that are this size, then for me personally, it's worth $130 to not do this by hand because I couldn't even pick up a dish out of the dishwasher. I got really bad tendonitis in my thumb. Like I cried mm. <laughs> and I don't cry. <laughs> we, got, we got a rebel uh, in the group. Karina says, even though it says to not use sweet potatoes, she's done it. Did you, did she microwave it a little bit or what did she do? I'm guessing not, but let me know. Wow. Tell us, tell us what happened. And, and I'm not saying it can't, but like I got this on sale. So, and I want to show you on Amazon too, before we leave, just so you guys, if you want to, you know what to look for, and this will help you with other things as well buying on Amazon because when I got this a week or two ago when probably some of you talked me into it I even had people go you need to talk to your bookkeeper you can take that off on your taxes because I told everybody I wanted it but I wasn't going to get it um let me grab my keyboard too um but I got it for $3.99 and some of your heads are exploding but right now, let me show you. Do, do, do. Is this the right one? Yes, this is the right one. I'm going to show you my screen. Can you see that? I think you can see me too. Chef AJ, can you yeah, see I the can see it. I can see okay. it. Great. So if we went here, if we just go to Amazon, and I want to show you two ways that you can find things on sale on Amazon that are going to blow your mind. Okay. See where it says all departments, Alexia skills, all these things. Look right there, Amazon warehouse. And we could do Breville peel and dice. And right. So there's the sous chef. And I want you to look here at this picture. So the one here that has a double decker accessory that is the peel and dice this does not have a double decker accessory this is just the plain sous chef that you have to upgrade okay sometimes amazon warehouse like now will still show you this full price so i got it 3.99 it's back to 550 but look here do you see where it says more buying offers more buying choices five used offers i, I so like also if we just Let's say we go normal, all departments, Breville peel and dice. And we click on it, just like normal. Most of the time now you can see it this way too. When we 
when we go over here, there's the regular price. Save with used good. Let's click on that. Oh, it's going to add it to the cart now. Sometimes it will tell you things. So like, let's look right here and we'll see more. So sometimes there may be more than one. This one happens to ship from Sur La Tab, and it's a used good condition. So sometimes these are literally the boxes smashed and nothing's been opened. That's how it was with my, um, my other sous chef that I had before this without the peel and dice. And in fact, it said was it said it was going to be good or acceptable, and it said scratches and cosmetic damage. There was a scratch inside the pl the box that holds the accessories that I only found because I was looking for a scratch on something. So I we've had really good luck. Cheryl just got something that was acceptable. And it was brand new, never been unwrapped. So it'll tell you some minor cosmetic damage on top, front, or side of item. Item may not come in original packaging. So, you know, if you spent $550 on a package and it was like really banged up, you're going to send it back. So that's how you can look for something that's less expensive. And again, we could go into Amazon Warehouse if you're not looking for the pre and dice. We could just say, Food pro. Actually, let's do this. Ninja Creamies have been hard to find. Ninja Creamy. And we can see, look, more buying choices. $1.99. They've not been putting these on sale. I found a couple of small sales that I helped a friend out with. But so let's go one, 11 used offers. Used, very good. And when you click and see, look, condition. Looks and functions as if it were new. Item may not come in original packaging. And so some will say like, look, condition, factory refurbished. So you can make an educated choice. And then I wanted to show you, this is the dicing compatibility kit. And are we not, let's see, no more featured offers. Let's do Revel, P let's see, Revel, Dice Compatibility Accessory Kit. There, there it is. Okay. It's $199. I think it's silly. It's got, oh, it does have the peeling disc. So you get the peeling disc, you get the 12 inch dicing kit and ta-da, that's it. And then you also end up having this other bowl. So you'll have two bowls to store. This is what kind of kept me getting from upgrading to this. Um, and then the, let's see, Breville Dicing. Oh, come here. Breville Dice. Okay. Dice Kit. I think this won't give it. So this is what I just bought. This is this other two discs that I was showing you, but we can come down here and look new to from. So there's no used ones. And sometimes they're not gonna be used. Somebody, Somebody's gonna buy it for someone for Christmas and they got two and it's, they're gonna send one of them back. Nice. So I just really wanted you guys to, um, see that so that you can kind of get an idea of I think 550 is, is a lot to spend now if you've got somebody who's going to spend that much money on you for Christmas hello this is what I want or maybe you already have it hello I would like those two other dicing kits right Kathy this is great we could do this with every machine like really like appliances for dummies and chef AJ is a dummy when it comes to first using anything you are not a dummy. I am. You help. I could. I got I me. Mean, my God, what I went through with the uh, Ninja Creamy until you taught me. So, Kathy, this was spectacular. What's next for you, Kathy? Well, next week I'm teaching a class about using milk pulp and okara and stuff like that. Um, what else is next? I'm thinking, and actually, I'm going to talk to you about it because I am thinking a lot of people are asking me to run kind of like a Mary's mini kind of mini class. And I'm hmm. thinking about doing that. I wanted to get your opinion on it, but of no, course but I'm doing. 
But then, but that's only, that's where you pick one starch and one veggie for like 10 days. Yeah. Hmm. I want to know what I'd pick. <laughs> what would you pick? Sweet potatoes and broccoli. That's all I eat now anyway. So it's easy for me. <laughs> and I don't, do you have to pick, and I'll have to do a little research because we haven't done a Mary's mini yet. I, I just think, looked at I don't, I think you're allowed to cook it different ways, but I know that, listen, I did a, I did one of these with Mary and my understanding is it's, you pick one. At least I know you pick starch. one starch, but I oh, thought but, you could pick different vegetables. Well, it could, you could be right, but, but you definitely don't rotate the starches. It's like just potatoes or just rice. And yeah. I was thinking of doing potatoes because then we could like do this and we could shred a bunch of potatoes for the for the week and, the, and we can cut up potatoes. And like that way we can do more than one because it's 10 days and you could kind of really get yourself going. Oh, that um, sounds great. And I figured after the holidays, I'm thinking of doing it in January. Yeah. And it yeah, would well, be I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it from now till Christmas Day. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not too many takers. Yeah. I don't think so. But yeah, so that and I'm going to be working on some books coming up next year and some special things. I'm going to try and do one product at least every quarter. So there. And there is going to be a sale that I'm going to do. But after Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, and maybe slightly after, I'm going to put three classes that are all McDougal compliant in a really inexpensive bundle. It's going to be my sandwich class where I make sweet potato turkey and I make um, white sweet, I'm white sweet potato turkey. And then I make regular sweet potato pastrami. And I make that oil-free chickpea cheese in there like I made last night. And so, and all of it's compliant. So I thought it might be nice for people who, okay, you're done with the holidays and you're ready to eat a little better, but you want, you're not ready to just eat like Chef AJ or just do a Mary's I, Mini yet. Chef AJ eats like Chef AJ because Chef AJ is lazy. People don't believe it, but I am. I really You're am. awesome. You're well, awesome is what you are. You are not yeah. lazy. I mean, like I got, I got a, just, just like, there's just the thought of having to do another Thanksgiving for 35 people. I'll wait till next year. You know, I love that we went to Triangle Vegetarian Thanksgiving again. We had not been since 2019, since before the pandemic. And before that, we had gone with some friends for like eight years. And so we've been doing Thanksgiving at home and with some friends. And when we ended up going last minute, it was glorious. And I kid you not, just because I could have a little bite of everything and I didn't have to make a whole big thing of everything I wanted a taste of. And that was really kind of nice. They're hoping they're going to do some oil-free stuff next year. But mm -hmm. we'll see. I know uh, Dillip, who runs the Triangle Vegetarian Society, doesn't eat oil at home. So I'm kind of hoping. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, if you don't eat it at home, Philip, don't eat it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Well, Kathy, this was so much fun. Thank you. Is it dinner time at your house now? It's nighttime there. So what are you going to have? Yeah. I'm looking here. I'm like, well, I guess we're having potatoes. Yep. Potatoes yeah. Potatoes. And maybe it, I've got some Brussels sprouts. So I might go ahead and shred the, my favorite thing to do is shred the Brussels sprouts. Maybe I'll saute either the probably the sh shreds and maybe shred up some red cabbage and crumble in some tempeh. You could also just put in some air fried chickpeas for a little bit of crunch. I use a little bit of liquid smoke and you could use a little date syrup or maple syrup if you choose, or you could even put a little bit of applesauce or really small diced apples in there to give it a little sweetness. That's how I got Cheryl to eat Brussels sprouts. Nice. Yeah. Charles, I can't get Charles to eat Brussels sprouts no matter what I do. He does not like them. Well, when I come that I, I'm taking that as a personal challenge because Cheryl uh -huh. is really picky. I bet Cheryl's pickier than Charles. Is. Well, just that he's not picky. He just won't eat Brussels sprouts. Oh, I have nothing I can do about it. Well, you have a great dinner. And if Thank I don't you. see you until next year, a wonderful Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year to you and Cheryl. Well, thank you so much. And if you have some questions when you start putting it together, call me and yep. we'll hop on a Zoom. Uh, this was so helpful. I don't think, honestly, I don't think I'm going to use the peel thing. Too messy. It's okay. But I really can see myself using that dicer now to go crazy with onions and tomatoes and salsa. 
you can make yeah you can make tons of salsa like you wanted to the i don't know where if we could get some whole like you know like you get the diced green chilies like kind of the cooked Mexican green chilies. I wonder if you can get whole ones that don't have salt. I've not looked for that. Yeah, I, I, listen, I, I, I eat salt. I mean, I don't cook with it, but I have condiments with it. Yeah. I, so. Well, you know me. Like if I know someone has a preference, I'm going right. to like go well, out I mean, of my way to find. Figure look, if it two out. items at the store, one had salt, one didn't, I'm going to buy the one without salt. But, you know, I so far I have not found a yellow ballpark mustard in the marketplace without salt and when i want yellow mustard it has salt because i'm too lazy to make it even though they taught us how in culinary school because i got like somebody needs to send you some make you some and send it to you that's <laughs> okay I, I don't eat that much mustard but i'm just saying that was an example you know i know for example all well, right thank you so much it yeah. was always awesome to come and hang yeah, out with lots you lots of fun i mean guys kathy's a, the quintessential teacher i mean her classes i've taken a few and it's like no stone is unturned every t is crossed every dot is every i is dotted so to speak yep all right. Thanks, my friend. Oh, bye. Just and have a great holiday. Thanks. You too. And thanks all of you for watching. This is our third show today. Another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for two shows. 9 a.m. Dr. Nandita Shah for allergies, asthma, and eczema. And 11 a.m. I'm going to show you my 10 Christmas recipes that I'm making for my holiday meal in under an hour. Take care, everyone.